Hello to all of our Pleasant Green members, congregation at large, and to all of our listeners. Uh, I am Minister Leonard Harris, and it is again a blessing and a privilege to share our Sunday School lesson with you. And for this Sunday, our lesson is number 7 for July 17th. 2022, uh, still from Unit 2, entitled, The Word, the Agent of Creation. And this Sunday's lesson is entitled, Bringing the Light, Bringing the Light. And our devotional reading is John the fifth chapter, verses 31 through 40. And then our background scripture is John, the 12th chapter, verses 27 through 50. And our printed passage is John, the 12th chapter, verses 44 through 50. And our key verse is... I have come into the world as a light so that no one who believes in me should stay in darkness. Uh, That is the 12th chapter of John, verse 46. And our lesson's aims are recognize that Jesus is God Desire a closer relationship with God through choosing to follow Christ. Share with others the opportunity to come into the light of Christ. And our lesson for this Sunday, again entitled Bringing the Light, has two sections to it. And the first section, verses 44 through 46 from the 12th chapter of John, is titled, The Final Opportunity. The Final Opportunity. And then, again, from John 12, uh, verses 47 through 50, The Only Escape. The Only Escape. So... Uh, This is uh, a very impactful lesson, and uh, we, first of all, want to invite the Spirit of God into our presence that uh, we would receive the things from this lesson that God intends for us to know. So we ask that we would pause just for a word of prayer. Heavenly Father, we count this a joy that you have blessed us with this opportunity to indulge ourselves into your word. And we recognize that when you speak, that you speak the very utterance of life. And we ask that you would impart unto us the things you would have us to know and that uh, we would be the better thereof from it, and that we would definitely in this day and in this time be lights in a world of darkness. And we ask it all in the name of Christ, and for his sake we ask it. Amen. So, uh, our lesson starts out verses 44 through 46, I'm going to actually read uh, from the NIV, and then we will look into uh, what Scripture is actually uh, saying and denoting to us. So it reads, Then Jesus cried out, Whoever believes in me does not believe in me only, but in the one who sent me. The one who looks at me is seeing the one who sent me. 
I have come into the world as a light so that no one who believes in me should stay in darkness. Now, uh, those uh, three scriptures uh, have very impactful understanding and meaning. And when we uh, uh, begin to indulge ourselves into what Christ is actually saying in these scriptures, a key factor uh, jumps out to us, and it is uh, in the preceding verses prior to starting at verse 44. A lot of times, uh, Christ is responding to some action, some activity, some kind of altercation that took place prior to the response that Christ gives. And this is one of those situations. And it would be beneficial to us uh, that we would look at what preceded the response that Christ gave. So, so now, the verses starting from 38 coming down to 45. Uh, gives us some insight into what preceded the response that Christ gave. And um, in your uh, leisure, uh, from the 53rd chapter of Isaiah, uh, these words were raised, these words were lifted uh, from the prophecy that was fulfilled from Isaiah 53. And in verse 38, we see those words or that prophecy being fulfilled and repeated. For it says, Lord, who has believed our report? And to whom has the arm of the Lord been revealed? And so it proceeds further and it goes on in 40. It said, he has blinded their eyes and hardened their hearts, lest they should see with their eyes, lest they should understand with their hearts and turn, so that I should heal them. And whom is he speaking to? And who is this being this uh, scripture being uh, spoken of in reference to? And this would be to those that rejected and those that denied whom Christ was and the message that Christ was delivering. This would be to the present day uh, rulers of that time, uh, to the chief priests and to the Pharisees. Uh, and to the Sadducees, this would be to the ruling powers of that day. And it is a very significant point that was uh, lifted. Uh, and this uh, we should entertain uh, coming from uh, verses 41 through 43. And it says... These things Isaiah said when he saw his glory and spoke of him, for speaking of Christ. Nevertheless, even among the rulers, many believed in him, but because of the Pharisees, they did not confess him, lest they should be put out of the synagogue. For they love the praise of men more than the praise of God. And as a result of these preceding scriptures, then Christ responds crying out of agony and crying out of being overwhelmed with the reality that I am the one you're looking for. I've come to bring the light in the presence of darkness. And yet, 
you are still non-believers and still opposition to the truth. And so this overwhelmed Christ and out of Christ's uh, heart and compassion for those that are lost, he cried out in agony that this is what had persuaded Christ to uh, empathize with the situation at hand. And so we look at this and recognize here that the rulers then and the rulers now, they fear their connection. They fear the loss of their status and what they perceive as power. They fear the loss of that, the prestige of that. They fear the rulers within their own association, within their own grouping. They fear the loss of that more than they do the praise of God. They want that continued association and benefits and they want that uh, prestige. They don't want to lose that for the fear, even in the scripture where it says that many of those rulers, they believed in Christ. They believed in what Christ was teaching. They saw the marvelous works of Christ. But yet, rather than lose social status, and this external power that they had become so aligned with. They chose to deny the truth of Christ and accept the status and praise and acknowledgement and recognition of men. Even though they know it had no equivalent it had no comparison to what Christ was bringing them and teaching them and demonstrating in their presence. Wow. And so, as we uh, look at, okay, what caused Christ to cry out and to uh, speak these things? Uh, these are the proceedings that led to the response. And... While we're here, we want to look at uh, what Christ says when he says, He who believes in me believes not in me, but in him who sent me. And he who sees me sees him who sent me. I have come as a light into the world that whoever believes in me should not abide in darkness. Now, we want to look at scripture to validate the words that Christ is saying to us here in the 12th chapter of John. In the very beginning of the book of John, the very first chapter, John expresses and reveals the deity of the Christ, of Jesus Christ. He, he presents and reveals the divine ship of Christ. And it is a familiar passage, but I want us to listen and digest what scripture is actually saying. And it reads, and this is the first chapter of John. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. And later we find out, uh, as we read further into the scripture, that when it says he was in the beginning with God, 
speaking of the word, in the 14th verse of the same chapter, it says, And the word became flesh and dwelt among us, and we beheld his glory, the glory as of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. And as we read further, it says, All things were made through him, and without him nothing was made that was made. In him was life, and the life was the light of men. And the light shines in the darkness, and the darkness did not comprehend it. So when Christ was saying in verse 46 that I have come into the world as a light so that no one who believes in me should stay in darkness, John explains that to us in the very first of his writings. In the first chapter, he explains to us the deity, the divine ship of who Christ is. He was light in place of darkness, but the darkness was so overwhelming. The darkness was so prevalent at the time until man didn't comprehend the light. Because we had become accustomed and conditioned to the darkness. And in this present day and time, we have so much of a prevalence of darkness until we've become conditioned and accustomed to seeing it, to hearing it, to discussing it, to talking about it, to living through it day in and day out. But those who have been enlightened and have come into the light of Christ can see the piercing word of God and direction in the presence of the overwhelming darkness and are able to distinguish between light and darkness. How then is this done? It says, it goes on to tell us, and I'm skipping down to verse 9. It says, that was the true light which gives light to every man coming into the world. And this speaks of John the Baptist who distinguished between himself and the one who was coming to give the light. Because verse 8 says he was not that light. John didn't try to take credit or to take recognition as being the one that he foretold was coming. But it clearly says that he was not that light, but he bared witness of the light that was coming, who is Jesus Christ. He said he was in the world in verse 10 and the world was made through him and the world did not know him. Isn't this something how you can be a part of the creation? The creation takes place out of your embodiment and practice and participation in the creation process and then what you created doesn't even recognize you. Men are still baffled and puzzled over the reality that we recognize as the Pharisees, those that were among the group that recognized that this man is speaking truth. This man is the light. This man is saying what needs to be said. But isn't it amazing how men can be in agreement with that God is the God of creation. That God created man and woman. And yet be puzzled that God could not be what God created. So we recognize God as the God of creation. But then 
We don't recognize that God could be embodied in what God created and be in our midst. And yet we sing the song during the holiday season of Christmas, Emmanuel, simply meaning God among or God with us. How? In the person of Christ, the anointed one. But let's look. The scripture goes on and it says, He came to his own and his own did not receive him. But as many as received him, to them he gave the right to become children of God to those who believed in his name. So, Again, we want to look at scripture to be in concert with what Christ is saying. And this is another passage of scripture, but I think it is worthy of mentioning, even though we can recite it as though it is a speech that we were taught in our earlier years. But let's listen again to what it is saying, because, again, it speaks about uh, the light, uh, Christ being uh, the light. Uh, so here in uh, the uh, third chapter uh, of John, uh, and this, of course, is a, a very familiar passage, it it expounds upon the uh, light, uh, but then it also has an overlay. It carries over into uh, the next part of our lesson, the only escape. But let's listen to what it says here. This is the third chapter of John, and it says, He who believes, uh, third chapter of John, the 18th verse, he who believes, because the 44th verse opens up with uh, proclaiming, whoever believes in me does not believe in me only, but in the one who sent me. And in the 18th verse of the third chapter of John, it says, he who believes in him is not condemned. Believes in who? Believes in Christ. The 17th verse says, For God did not send his Son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. He who believes in him is not condemned, but he who does not believe is condemned already, because he has not believed in the name of the only begotten Son of God. And then it speaks about the contrast, the comparison between condemnation and the acceptance of the light. Because the 46th verse tells us about him being a light in the world of darkness. So 19, the 19th verse says, and this is the condemnation that the light has come into the world. And men love darkness rather than light because their deeds were evil. That ties us right back in to the preceding verses uh, 42 and 43, which talked about how there were men in the group of rulers and they feared the Pharisees and the acceptance of men, the praise and recognition of men, more than the recognition and the praise of God. And so here in the 19th verse, it says, men love darkness rather than light because their deeds were evil. And so the light exposes the deeds and the works of man. And this one, people become so conditioned by the acceptance of evil until they would rather be 
controlled and rather be in company with evil because it appears that it has the power and people want to be uh, associated with the fact that uh, if you need something, I am in a position of power to grant you what you need. They don't want to be exposed, however, that their ways are corrupt, that they are the hypocrites, that they are the ones that need the light. And so it says that they uh, love the darkness more than the light. And so, uh, but then it says, listen to verse 20. It says, for everyone practicing evil hates the light and does not come to the light, lest his deeds should be exposed. But he who does the truth comes to the light that his deeds may be clearly seen that they have been done in God. Now, our concluding part of our lesson, the only escape. We will uh, read the scriptures here and then share with uh, our listening audience, what God has shared uh, with your facilitator. Uh, and it says, if anyone hears my words but does not keep them, I do not judge that person. And I spoke of how that the verse we just read out of the third chapter of John, starting at 17 and reading forward, that he didn't send his son into the world to condemn the world, but through his son that the world may be saved through him. So here Christ says, I do not judge that person, for I did not come to judge the world, but to save the world. However, there is a judge for the one who rejects me and does not accept my words. The very words I have spoken will condemn them at the last day. For I did not speak of my own, but the Father who sent me commanded me to say all that I have spoken. And I know that his commands lead to eternal life. So whatever I say is just what the Father has told me to say. So here Christ identifies that I'm not the judge. That is a power higher than myself. Uh, when we think of one who is equipped and qualified to judge, that resides with God and God alone. But Christ does teach us a lesson about judging. And this is out of the seventh chapter of Matthew. The seventh chapter of Matthew. And it tells us this. It says, judge not that you be not judged. The first verse of the seventh chapter of Matthew it says, for with what judgment you judge, you will be judged. And with the measure you use, it will be measured back to you. And why do you look at the speck in your brother's eye, but do not consider the plank in your own eye? And how can you say to your brother, let me remove the speck from your eye and look, a plank is in your own eye. Hypocrite, first remove the plank from your own eye and then you will see clearly to remove the speck from your brother's eye. And here, the ruling class has a practice of judging those 
they consider to be not equal to their status. And they're always uh, acknowledging and pinpointing flaws and faults of others, yet they never identify the deep-seated corruption of themselves. And so here, Christ teaches the valuable lesson. First, get that stuff, that speck out of your own eye. And then you may be able to see clearly how to remove the, uh, get the plank out of your own eye. And then you may be able to see clearly how to remove the speck from your brothers. If you correct yourself, maybe then you'll be better prepared to share and to show others how to correct their flaws. The one other uh, comment in reference to the practice of judging. When we speak of the judgment of God in your leisure, you may want to read uh, the 19th number of the book of Psalms, verses 9 through 10, which speaks of God's judgment. And it says, the judgment of the Lord is true and righteous altogether. True and righteous altogether. The judgment of God is not slanted to serve the wishes of a particular group of people. It is not bias or prejudice towards one group or one segment of God's people over another. It is true and righteous altogether. It says more to be desired are they than gold. Yes, more than fine gold. So when we think about the judgment of mankind, we know that what comes with it is all of the flaws and corruptive behaviors and practices of mankind along with man acting in place of judgment. Uh, Proverbs, the uh, uh, 14th uh, chapter in the 12th verse says, There is a way that seemeth right unto man, but in the end it leads to death. It leads to destruction. So in the closing of our lesson, uh, where Christ says that I know that his command leads to eternal life. So whatever I say is just what the Father has told me to say. I want to close uh, with these words. And again, it's coming from the book of John. This would be in the uh, sixth chapter. And I'm going to uh, begin reading uh, at the 32nd verse. Uh, and it says, Then Jesus said to them, Most assuredly I say to you, Moses did give you the bread from heaven, but my Father gives you the true bread from heaven. The bread, the manna that Moses received from the God of Israel, it was a physical bread. It was to provide a physical need, a need of substance. Uh, to feed the body. But here God distinguishes Christ. Christ distinguishes between the physical bread that they received and the spiritual bread. And he says, My Father gives you the true bread from heaven. 
For the bread of God is he who comes down from heaven and gives life to the world. And in verse 35, it says, uh, or 34 says, Then they said to him, Lord, give us this bread always. When the people understand what they're actually getting, then in their hearts, they, re they respond, Lord, that's the bread that we need. Give us that always. And then in verse 35, Jesus says, I am the bread of life. He who comes to me shall never hunger, and he who believes in me shall never thirst. But I said to you that you have seen me and yet do not believe. All that the Father gives me will come to me, and the one who comes to me I will by no means cast out. For I have come down from heaven not to do my own will, but the will of him who sent me. It is always our prayer that the continued blessings of God would be afforded unto us and that we would not just be hearers of the word of God, but doers as well. God bless you and God keep you is our prayer.